Once in a Blood Moon, Mr. Grizz will give Samurai players super powerful modded versions of weapons, the Grisco weapons. In Splatoon 2, we only had 4 of these, but in the 1 year since Splatoon 3's release, we've gotten 3 more. And while all these weapons are pretty broken, I still see many random Samurai players struggle using them. Maybe because we only get to play with a splatter shot in the training room, <coughs> Mr. Grizz, but also because the newer ones aren't as simple as the original 4, where all you had to do was tap or hold the ZR button and watch the Samurai enemies go down in an instant. So let's take a look at each of the three new Grisco weapons and how to best use them. If you're wondering about the original four, I already have a guide on them, just check for the link in the description. The only additional things I can say about the original four is that if you have the charger, you can snipe the lids from the ground, and that you really shouldn't use the bucket to fight against the fish stick. Also the bucket can pierce through armor, so if you have it, you are on fly fish duty. Also also, the fall off can one shot a stinger as long as you aim for the head. Anyways, let's begin with the Grizz Bow, which has been around the longest. This thing shoots 9 arrows at a time, and just like the regular Tri-Stringer, you can charge them up so that they do a little mini explosion moments after hitting their target. However, it takes a full second to fully charge up, and you can only do 3 fully charged shots per ink tank. Those explosions might be pretty cool, and each arrow will do 150 damage, however, if you only ever use your fully charged shots, you'll be out of ink for the majority of your run. What you should be doing instead is a lot of tap shots, or half charge shots. Tap shots work very similarly to the reflux and how it's used to farm money in turf wars, and since this bow shoots 9 arrows at a time, you only need a couple of tap shots to paint the whole map. Just remember to move around since this mode also has the shortest range. Your other option is to use half charge shots, which are ideal for taking out lessers. They only take half the time to charge, and also do half the damage, but since the arrows won't pierce through the horde of salmonids, this method will do more damage over time compared to the fully charged shots. The bow also comes with two different aiming modes, the default horizontal and the powerful vertical, which you can use by jumping. In general, the horizontal has a very wide area of coverage, and you want to be using that when you're going up against lessers or trying to paint the map. But if you want to take out bosses, that's where you want to switch over to that vertical shot. It's kind of like the dragon piercer in Monster Hunter, where a bunch of your arrows hit your target, so they end up dealing at least 300 damage, which will basically one-shot every boss in the game, especially if you're shooting them from up close. Overall, I think the bow is the most complicated Grisco weapon to use since it's got so many different options, and sometimes it's hard to make the right call on which charging mode and which shooting option to choose in different situations. The one thing I know for sure is that if you only stick to one method, you're gonna have a bad time. So be sure to do as the console's name and switch things up depending on what you're trying to do. In general, it's best to tap to turf, half for lessers, and fully charge vertical shots for bosses. These three rules might not be perfect optimized, but they should be able to get you through most waves with relative ease. The next Grisco weapon we got is the Splatana. This? This one's just a sword. It's got the range of 1 too, so if the weapon doesn't come into physical contact with the enemy, it just does no damage. It is the worst Grisco weapon for painting, so you're going to have to rely on your teammates to keep good turf control. But on the bright side, this is the best Grisco weapon for damage. Each swing deals 200 damage and it barely uses up any ink, so you can swing it around 33 times per tank. However, the real power of the Grizz Tana is its charge shot. This Honda Slash, as Captain Astronaut likes to call it, deals 1200 damage and it can pierce through armor, so you can instantly take out any boss salmonid. It kinda makes me feel like Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. Ink breathing, third form, Honda Slash! The best part about this attack is that it can pierce through armor, so you can use it to one-shot a drizzle while hiding in its dome, a steel head that's not even charging up its bomb, and even a flyfish. Although they are a bit tricky to hit, so it might take you a couple of tries to get the aim just right. The best part is that you can do 6 charge slashes with 1 ink tank, so you can easily plow through a bunch of bosses. And just like the regular Splatanas, if you hold forward during your charged attack, your inkling will jump forward, closing the gap between you and your target. Although it is a pretty short jump, so you still have to get pretty close to land your attacks. This weapon is an absolute powerhouse, and it is my favorite of all the Grisco weapons. Its only downside is that it's really bad at painting, so if it is in rotation, be sure to take care of the lessers for them and paint their feet. Then just watch as they slash through every single boss like a hot knife through butter. I miss those days of YouTube. The final new weapon we got is the Grizz Dooleys, and oh boy are they fun to use. Every time you do a dodge roll, these Dooleys will make a little explosion to 
that deals 125 damage to everything that's within your personal space bubble. It's a pretty small bubble though. The best part is that you can do this dodge roll 9 times before the game makes you pause for a second and then you can do 4 more before running out of ink. It's really fun to zip around and blow up all the lessers, although it's also pretty easy to just accidentally roll off the map or into a boss. So remember, the explosions do not make you invincible. Don't just run into a horde of salmonids thinking you just walk away safely or roll away safely. Oh yeah, this weapon can also shoot like all the other dualies. Each shot deals only 30 damage and the base range is shorter than that of the dapple dualies, making these the shortest range dualies currently in the game. You do get a lot of extra range about the same as regular dualies while in turret mode right after you roll and the two reticles converge so your DPS goes off the charts. However, I found it a bit difficult to get used to the switch between normal shots and turret mode and then aiming correctly. Maybe it's just a skill issue but the amount of times I failed to splat a steel head made me feel like I should just throw my top 5% salmon on badge in the garbage. But also, this weapon is just hard to use. It's definitely got the highest skill floor of all the Grisco weapons. And look, I'm sure in the right hands it can do wonders, like that one clip where someone was using the dodge roll mid-air to blow up a fly fish. But it's so hard to pull that off that I'd personally put a disclaimer like, don't try this at home, this stunt is performed by a trained professional. Because the 5 times I tried it, I failed miserably. The closest thing I could pull off was using the dodge roll to instantly splat a fish stick. Overall, I'd say the best way to use the Grizz Dooleys is to dodge roll to shred through the lessers and then use your turret mode on the boss salmonids. It does take a while to get used to this weapon, so if you do get it for the last wave of a run, I'd say hit leave so you can play around with it in the little practice room for a bit, that way you can get used to the dodging distance and reticle in turret mode. Of course, I'm just one guy, so if you've got any tips for these Grisco weapons, especially the Dooleys, be sure to drop them down below. And that just leaves us with the last new Grisco weapon, if we get one. Considering there's a whole nother year of updates to look forward to in Splatoon 3, I'm very hopeful that we'll get at least one more Grisco weapon added to the game. The real question is, what kind of weapon will it be? So far we've gotten one per overall class, including blasters, brellas, chargers, sloshers, stringers, platanas, and dualies. This leaves us with only a couple of options, rollers, splatlings, brushes, or shooters. Out of those four, I think we're most likely to see a Grisco brush next. In general, the current Grisco weapons are from classes that don't have too much mechanical variations. Out of the four remaining classes, brushes have the least, only three. Apart from this pattern, I also think a Grisco brush would be the easiest to design. Just give it the range and power of a paintbrush, put the wind up time and speed of an inkbrush and you have yourself a ridiculously broken weapon. Although it might be a bit too broken, and it also would be just as easy to use as the original four Grisco weapons. Which reminds me to point you towards the video where I talked about how they work. I know it's Splatoon 2, but they function the exact same way in this game. I am a bit curious to see what kind of Grisco weapons design you can come up with, so if you have one in mind, do drop them in the comments below. I'm tempted to make a video where I go over your guys' ideas. Either way, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you around. JK, if you made it to the very very end of the video, use the keyword gem in your comment. That way, I know you're a cool person who waits until the whole video is over before they actually leave. Thank you.